Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a modern looking website using only Python. For today's project, we're going to use two Python libraries. One is called Pinecone and the other is Plotly. First of all, let me introduce you to the new Pinecone library, which allows us to create web application using only Python. That means we don't have to know HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. Pinecone is a relatively new framework. Under the hood, Pinecone actually parsed the Python code and compile it into a Next.js or React application for the front end. For the back end, I believe it uses FastAPI. Plotly is one of the best data visualization tools for Python. You can make fully interactive graphs or visualizations with it. For all my projects, I like to create a separate Python virtual environment because it's a good practice to keep all your Python environments isolated. Inside my Pinecone examples folder, I'm going to create my Python virtual environment there. So I like to use the Python VM module to create Python virtual environment. To activate it, you can just type dot space dot for slash VM. It's the folder script dot folder activate. And if you see your virtual environment name appear inside the bracket before the folder pass, then you know that the virtual environment has been activated. Once we have the virtual environment, we can install the Python library. So the pip install is completed and now we can create our Pinecone projects. I'm going to make a folder called Mortgage Calculator, and this will be the folder for our Pinecone project. And cd into that folder. As you can see, we have the folder here. Right now, it's empty. Once we're inside the folder, we can just type PC in it, and this will basically initialize a Pinecone project. And as you can see, a bunch of files are being added, automatically generated inside this folder. So you actually don't have to touch anything except one file inside this folder, which I'm going to show you very soon. This .web folder, this folder contains all the front end stuff, all the, uh, the JavaScript, and I believe the React app is inside the .app folder. The Python script that we'll have to modify is inside this mortgage calculator folder and the name is also called mortgage calculator. I'm going to add this folder inside my VS code. So now you can see the folder structure right here. This is the same name as whatever you name your product folder. So in our case, it's going to be mortgage calculator. So this will be the main file that we need to edit. So inside our project folder, if you just type PC run, this will actually start downloading a bunch of uh, JavaScript libraries. It will actually build your project into a React Next.js application and it will actually run it. So depending on your internet speed, it might take a little bit of time. And now this is ready. As you can see, we can access this web app on the local host port 3000. So this is the Pinecone project that we just created. And right now, this is just boilerplate code. And everything you see on this page right now is being generated from this mortgage calculator.py file. We're going to set up the front end stuff first, and then we'll add the logic for the back end. I want to give a shout out to this YouTube channel, Line Indent. Part of the front end user interface was inspired by one of his tutorial videos. He produced great content, and I recommend checking out his YouTube channel if you're into web app or mobile app development using Python. So it's completely okay to just wipe out the whole file because we're going to rewrite most of it anyways. And I've written the code already, and you can also find a link to the code to my GitHub page. So right now, I just copy and pasted the bare minimum code to set up the front end. As you can see right now, there's no state. Well, the state is empty. And I'm going to save the file. As you can see here, this is kind of in like a development mode. Once you save the file, a web server will automatically refresh to reflect that. As you can see, we're still on the local host 3000 port. And now this is our user interface. So right now there's nothing here. If you click on the button, it doesn't work because we haven't added any backend logic yet. So let's take a look what we have done so far. We got this user interface by using pure Python. There's no HTML, no CSS, no JavaScript. But to be fair, if you look close enough, a lot of the Python code actually resembles HTML or CSS. For example, the inner, the color, font size, these are the HTML properties. But the syntax is still Python, so no complaint there. Next, we're going to set up the backend for our web application. A crucial piece of information that 
we need for this mortgage calculator is that we need to calculate the actual mortgage amortization schedule. In this video, I don't want to go into the details or the theories behind how to calculate the amortization schedule, uh, and you just have to trust me. I left a brief explanation on the mortgage calculation theory on my blog. If you're interested, you can check out my blog, link in the description below. For the mortgage calculation logic, we're going to store that inside a separate script, call it mortgage schedule, and I'll just be pasting in the code here. Again, you can find the full code to this project on my GitHub page. Now we have this generate mortgage schedule function. All we need to do is just import the function into here. Actually, let me talk a little bit about the function. So at this mortgage schedule.py file, there are two functions. The first one calculates the monthly mortgage payment. And this is going to be a fixed rate mortgage. This function does not work for variable rate mortgage. So the second function, the generate mortgage schedule, this will generate a complete mortgage amortization schedule in a list. And then later on, we'll be converting that list into a pandas data frame because it's just easier to work with the data frame. You don't have to, of course. And now let's just import this function into our mortgage.py file like that. And we also imported partly and also pandas. If you like the video so far, please subscribe and hit the like button. It's going to help the channel grow and I really appreciate that. So now we have the user interface, the front end, and also the mortgage calculation, the core logic for the back end. So now we need to connect the back end logic and the front end together such that when we type something and then press the calculate, it should calculate the numbers for us and then also display a mortgage amortization schedule chart on the site. So for that purpose, we'll need to use the income state. And we can think of a state as a collection of all the variables and functions that can change in the web application. For our mortgage calculator example, the state should include these variables. For example, the total value of an asset, in this case, might be a house, the down payment, and the interest rate. And of course, the amortization period. Of course, we also need to save the plot chart as a object or a variable so that we can display it and change it later on. And we need to declare all those variables uh, inside this state class. One thing to note is for all the variables and functions, we need to use type hinting. I think this is required. If you don't use type hinting for variables or functions, it's going to throw an error at you. So. We have to use them and it's also good practice because it will help reduce errors and help with debugging later on. So then how do we connect these states with these elements, these widgets on the website? Pinecone library actually makes it very easy to pass the variables from this user interface to the backend. So these are the input fields. As you can see, total amount, down payment, interest rate, amortization period. These four lines of code corresponding to the four boxes and under the hood, this is actually using the pinecone input widget right here. I just wrote a function to wrap around so that we can actually style the input widget. It actually takes on an additional argument. It's called onChange. Basically, it means once you change the value or the state of this variable, what do you do? Once you include this, and in our case, what we want pinecone to do is once we change the state, we want to actually set the state to whatever value we put in here. So basically, for example, as you type 1 million here, it should store the 1 million number into the state, total amount state variable. And we have done the change on this function. Now we just need to update these with the onChange argument. And then we also need to add an additional argument for the button because once we click on this button, we want the web app to actually kick off the calculation and then display a chart. For that purpose, we want to add an additional argument called onClick. When we click on this button, it will run this function get data from the state. So essentially this get data function will calculate the mortgage schedule, put it inside a pandas data frame, then it will create a plotly chart and store the poly chart inside this mortgage schedule figure so that we can display it later on. And now we have the chart stored inside our state variable. So we also need to display that, right? And the code is actually here. I'm just gonna uncomment it. We're going to use the PC pinecone.plotly function to bring the plotly chart over to here. One thing I want to point out about using plotly and pinecone is that if you are already familiar with plotly, you probably will tend to do something like big update, update layout, plotly layout like this, but this will not work. 
And the way to add your customized file is using this PC dot plotly function. So first you pass in the data and this is a plotly chart, plotly figure object. And then you want to add all your styling inside this layout argument and you pass it like a dictionary. Another thing to note is in plotly, if you want to adjust the font color or the font size, you can just type font underscore color, font underscore size. But in this case, I'm not sure why it doesn't work. You have to split them into kind of the sub property. So you have to specify font first as a dictionary key. And then inside the value, you further split the color and then the size like that. I only tried font in this case, and I'm assuming that for other properties will be something similar. If you encounter something like that, and just remember you need to access or you need to specify the main property first and then you specify the sub property later on. Okay, so we made the change now to add the backend logic to the code. Let me just save the file and it's complaining about no modules called pandas. Let's just install pandas. PC run, rerun our web app. So I also noticed this here because apparently I terminated the previous process. And for some reason, it's telling me that something is still running. So if you see this, just type K, uh, stand for kill. You're going to kill the previous process and then rerun a new process here. And that's running. Let's see what our web app look like. So now we see the plotly chart over here and let's just type something in here. So let's say 1.6 million house and we're going to pay a 600,000 down payment. Interest rate super high nowadays, 5% amortization 30 years. Actually, I wanted to add some text over here to give some details about our mortgage and I'm going to add it before the broadly chart like that. Save the changes and reload our web app. Right, so now we can see some text for our users. So this is telling us that for a 1 million mortgage outstanding balance, 30 years or 360 months amortization, and with a 5% interest rate, my monthly mortgage payment is going to be $5,368.22. And this chart will show you how much interest versus principal that you're going to pay over 30 years of time. So this is how you can create a modern looking and full stack web application using only Python. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.